Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and today on City of Churches, today we're in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, to visit the shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Now we're going to go inside and meet its new pastor, and I'm sure he's going to look very familiar to you. He's a great guy, and he's an old friend of ours. There's a lot of history here. So come on, follow me inside. Well, here I am with a, uh, a very dear friend, an old friend that you'll recognize from his numerous appearances on net and his own show, Breaking Bread. And he is the pastor of the Shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Monsignor Jamie. Anthony, thank you for having no, me. No, no, thank you. This is good to be happy with us. <laughs> well, the bishop keeps moving me around, so I, is... we make, I mean, we're regular here. <laughs> it's, it's, they're going to go, wait a minute, what is he doing? Didn't you do one over there? Did you, so it's kind of it's kind of interesting, though. But that's a, that's a testament to you, you know, the bishop moves you where you know they can do the most good. So, you know, uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel has churches in the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, what makes it so popular, Our Lady of Mount Carmel? There's a great devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, especially among immigrants. There's a great among Italians, among Haitians. Uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel is the patron state of Haiti. And there's just been a devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel that I, I believe came from Italy. Uh, many of them, uh, they brought it over here, the traditions they brought here. Many churches have been named after Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Why is this name the shrine? Of Our Lady of Mount well, Carmel. it was designated a shrine because this church really was established to cater to the Italian immigrants. There are a lot of Irish and German, Slavic people in the neighborhood that settled in, in New York City uh, at the late 1800s. The parish was established in 1887, 130 years ago. And then um, it was designated a shrine because that's a special designation that a parish receives because that means it has no boundaries. Every church parish has boundaries uh, within a diocese. So it had no boundaries because it was open to Italians from all over. And there's been other shrine churches for et different ethnic groups as well. They serve all people regardless of where they live. So it's a special designation. It's not done too much anymore, but since it, this was already designated, uh, we still use the title of the Shrine Church of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I'm looking at the church. It has a very modern look to it. Are these the original windows from the old church? Some of them are. Some of the, the uh, windows in the new church were taken from the old church, uh, but most of them were fabricated new because they couldn't fit. Whatever could fit, they placed in. And then Robert Moses came in and he constructed the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, the famous BQE. BQE. <laughs> and with that, there were four churches that were torn down to make room for the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Our Lady of Mount Carmel being one of them. So just after four years, um, they had to knock down that beautiful structure. And many of the old time parishioners still recall that day when they received that news and when the church came down. It kind of like tore out their hearts because sure. they sacrificed so much to build the church and uh, then it was torn down. And then what they did was they had this piece of property which is only a half a block away. The parish then built this structure, and as you can see, it's not a cathedral-like structure. It has a flat ceiling, and it's a, a, a rectangle. And it, what it is is basically a square box. But they built it this way because they did not think that the parish was going to survive. Because the boundaries of the parish were cut in half with the BQE. So that means people had to cross underneath the Brooklyn Queens Expressway to get here. The other factor was that three blocks down was the parish of St. Vincent de Paul, the parish of Annunciation. Then you had St. Cecilia, St. Francis. You had St. Stan. So you had a lot of parishes in this neighborhood. So they, they thought that the parish would not survive. And if that happened and the parish had to be assumed into the other parishes, the church could be converted to a community center or a parish hall that the community and the other parishes could use. But what they didn't realize was that there was a great devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, but also the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel was a very big tradition here. From the year that the parish was founded, they had a procession 
with Our Lady of Mount Carmel. That's a tradition that many churches have with the statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. They do possess her through the streets. So that feast started right away. Then in the early 1900s, uh, when people from Nola, Italy came here, they brought the tradition of the Giglio, oh, St. Okay. Paulinus. And they brought that tradition here to this parish. And that has been part of this parish ever since. So with the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Paulinus, which they joined together, it kept this parish strong. And even when people moved away till this day, they come back for the feast. So the feast made this parish strong. And now it's the strongest parish in the neighborhood. And that's why the church was built like this. And that's why the parish survived after all of that because of the great feast. Now I could see, you know, when I uh, drive around how the demographics have changed. So many of these buildings that were warehouses are now yes. lofts. Yes. And just so many people down here. Yes. You know, if I was a real estate genius, I would have bought property years ago. Yes. I'd be as wealthy as a lot of people. You know, you never know. I mean, I remember coming to this feast as a kid. I lived in Long Island City, St. Rita's Parish, right over the, the Pulaski Bridge on McGinnis Boulevard. And we would come to this feast, because this is the largest feast, uh, second only to San Gennaro in the city. Wow. And we would come every year to the feast of Our Lady Mount Carmel and St. Paulinus, because we had a Giglio in, in uh, Long Island City as well. And so we would come to this feast. I never dreamed that someday that I would be the pastor here. I never dreamed that I would be so involved in this parish, and I was made pastor last January, a year and a half ago, but I came here, uh, really I got involved in the parish in 1985, when Monsignor Casado was transferred from St. Rita's, and he became the pastor here. Oh, okay. He became the seventh pastor here. And with that, I got very involved in the parish and in the feast. And then when I entered the seminary, uh, I entered from here, and I worked here as a seminarian, during the summer months and throughout the year. So I was very familiar with the parish, the feast, and the neighborhood. And it was a different neighborhood then. As you said, factories and lofts all over the place. There were no restaurants at all. I remember being here on a Sunday night wanting to go to eat something, and you had to either go to Kellogg's Diner. Oh yeah, we saw or that. We had a, there was a pizza place on Metropolitan Avenue. Otherwise, you had to go out of the neighborhood. Now, things have changed. In the last 15 years, the neighborhood has changed drastically. Many of the old timers moved away or died off and uh, were pushed out also because all the construction in the neighborhood, houses were being torn down. A lot of people made some money because houses that were worth 100,000, 200,000 were now being sold today for one and two million dollars. Yeah, sure. So when people see those numbers, you know, they take the money and they run. But there are, there are some old timers here, but people come back every year for the feast. Well, I saw the feast and, and the fact that we were here for your tree lighting and I was here and I sang, I saw how many people were in the streets. So yes. that's a good sign right there. Well, the bishop felt, you know, the St. Vincent de Paul Parish closed. Annunciation Parish down the block, very few people going there. The church itself was falling down. The feast with all the changing in the neighborhood was being threatened because now you have new buildings going up, people don't want the feast in front of their streets, uh, the neighborhood changing, less people coming to church. Uh, the bishop asked me to come here to try to build up the feast, build up the parish, and reach out to the new people in the community. So I, I thank the bishop for, for believing in me that I can at least attempt it. I will do my best and you know, I, I always, you know, usually take on something that I know I could achieve. And, yeah, I know uh, <laughs> that about you. We know that. Listen, but, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. We have more to show you here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to City of Churches and we're here with Monsignor Jamie at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Welcome back. Thank you, Anthony. You know, we were here with you, uh, to our viewers, on Ash Wednesday. And we went out with you. I found it very amazing and unique at what you did. You know, you went around to out on the street and, and we went to the police station. What were your feelings about that? Because that was, that's not traditional. Right. What were your thoughts on that and why you would do this? Well, I mean, first of all, I mean, Pope Francis said we have to bring church to the people. Mm -hmm. And 
I've been doing that since I was ordained, 23 years ago. My first year I was ordained, I was sent to St. Patrick's in Bay Ridge. And on Ash Wednesday, after we had all the services in the church, I went to the local firehouse, the police station. I went to the local stores on the avenue, the subway, and I just gave out ashes. Now, some people say, oh, you're defeating the purpose. People should be going to church. Yes, they should be going to church, but they're not. Let's maybe invite them. So maybe me being out there on the street is an invitation to them to come back to the church. So um, I, I think it's a great thing. I think it's nice because some people would not have come for ashes. Maybe it was the first time they received ashes in a number of years. And maybe that was the turning point that God is calling them back to church. I just feel that the priest has to be out there with the people. And uh, it's not like years ago, you have built a beautiful church, you opened the doors and the people flocked in. That's not the case anymore. You have to go out there and you have to bring them in. And that's why I feel with the hipsters, one of the challenges I have here is to minister to them. And that's why I do my best to walk the streets, to eat in the restaurant. I like to eat, as we all know. No, there's nothing but, wrong with that. I enjoy that <laughs> And too. I like to cook. So, you know, I go out. But in that conversation, I'm really evangelizing to them as well. You know, I go to Bermontes. I'm in there two, three times a week. And I remember being here 30 years ago and walking into that restaurant and knowing every person at every table. Hello, hello, Monsignor. Well, hello, Father. But then it was, hello, Jamie. And I knew all the people from the neighborhood. Now I walk in there, there's maybe one or two people that I know, and the rest are all new people. But I still say hello. And I try to go in there with my collar and, uh, you know, just greet people. I mean, that day I went there on Ash Wednesday, and I would say, come to church. The following Sunday they came to church. So they didn't come on Ash Wednesday, but they came on Sunday. And if I didn't see them on Ash Wednesday, they wouldn't have been there on Sunday. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to show our viewers right now when we went out with our crew and Monsignor Jamie on Ash Wednesday. So look at this and we'll be back in a few minutes. Here we are at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and I'm here with Monsignor. Jamie Gigante, how are you? Anthony, Monsignor. thank you. Thank well, you for Well, this is your me. new parish. Yes. You know, and we're in the middle of Williamsburg and obviously as our viewers are looking, it's Ash Wednesday. Yes. It's also Valentine's Day, which is why I got a little red on. But well, Monsignor, before we go any further for our viewers, can you please give me my ashes? I've been saving for this moment. Here we go. You can make it big so it reads. All right. Turn away from sin and return to the gospel. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So we're here and you're going to show us around the yes. neighborhood and you're going to show us the different restaurants and the different uh, venues down here that have changed because I know the neighborhood's changed in a oh, while. Yeah. Are you going to give out ashes to all these people? Yes, I know. You know, a lot of people say, you know, it's not the right thing to do. People should come to church and that's true. But there are some people that because of their schedules cannot make it to church. On that note, Take me on a tour, let's go. Sure. Show me where we're gonna go. Let's go. Hey, hey guys. guys, how we doing? Hey, how's it going? Happy hey. Ash Wednesday. Thank you. How are you? Happy Ash Wednesday. Good to see you guys. Oh, nice. Thank Good you. you. How are we doing, guys? all right? Good to see I know you guys made it over to the church today, but uh, you had to get Another back. Emergency. Another emergency. So I just come to you. Thank you. So, all about uh, emergencies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we just wanted to give you guys ashes for Ash Appreciate Wednesday, and then I Appreciate all that you do for us, okay? All of us do. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So guys, thank you for all you do for us. I know during the yeah. feast, you guys are always there for us, and whenever we need you. And you know we're there for you too. If you ever need the hall, you ever need anything, I'm here. So we're at PS319, this is a public school? Yeah, one of our local public schools, it's a preschool, and uh, some of the teachers are parishioners, and on Sunday they asked if I could come over and give out ashes to some of the teachers, some of the aides, because it's hard for them with the schedule to get to church. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Happy Thank Lent. You. Thank you very Thank you much. so much. God Thank bless you. Very you. Much. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Thank Have you. a happy Lent. Thank you all. Thank you. I'll see you Thank soon. You, I'll see you at Easter. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. God bless you. You feeling okay? A little bit better. I right, take one day at a time. All right, we'll pray for you. God bless you. Thank you. Well, here we are, right? And 
Giando's on the water. It's a favorite of mine. I fact, know. I've, I've been coming here for years. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Let's go inside. That's yes, great. So here we are at Giando's. I mean, look at the view. Williamsburg is unbelievable. And Monsignor Jamie's going to minister ashes to the, to the staff and whoever else uh, wants to come up. So please remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall Amen. return. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. We're here at the 9-4 precinct and the guys are getting ready to go out on the next tour. And every year I come to the fire department like we did before and to the police department because the guys really find it hard to get out, That's you know, true. to come to church for ashes. So we bring, we bring the church to them. So I here like we are that. again. I like that. And these guys need to be protected because they, every day they're out there protecting all of us. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thanks for all you do for us. Well, we're back, and I, I sure hope you enjoyed that because that was a lot of fun that day, you know? <laughs> I mean, I got my ashes from you. I went home and went, who hit you? It's a big, giant thing. I know. But it was great going into the, you know, the firehouse. They were so nice, and the police department, and just the streets, you know? I saw the way people were receptive, and i amazed at going down the streets and how much this area has changed. What do you wish for? What do you pray for for the future of, a, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel? Well, on Sunday, the benches aren't filled. Okay. And I pray that they get filled. And I pray they get filled with young people. We have a mass here on Sunday evening. And I moved it down to Annunciation because that's on the main street. It's more of a traditional church. We get about 50 or 60 young people on Sunday evenings. And right now that church is on the renovation. But when it's finished, in front of the church is a little street and then there's a square. I petitioned to the city to have that street closed so that we will have a big square in front of the church. I want to put out tables out there, I want to put a little coffee bar out there so people can come and sit and just talk. You know, I'll be able to talk to them uh, to try to get them in. My dream is to get more and more people. Every Sunday or once a month right now after Mass we'll have wine and cheese and just you know opportunities for them to talk. Also, a lot of the young people, they don't you know, want a traditional church where you just come and, you know, you put your donation in the basket. They want to be involved. They want hands-on. Uh, we have um, a food kitchen here, and it was started by North Brooklyn Angels. And what they do is a van was purchased, and it was purchased in partnership with the Episcopal Church, uh, one of the local uh, businessmen, uh, Norman Brodsky and his wife. And Our Lady Mount Carmel, we let them now use our kitchen so our kitchen is used to prepare the meals. The truck goes out five times a week and it serves hot meals to the homeless and those who are poor, those who need a meal. See, that's so silly. with that, I ask people to be volunteers. And many of the hipsters or young people have volunteers for that. And by me going down there and talking to them, it's a form of evangelization. They're putting their faith into action, but it's also a way of evangelization. We have a, a many self-help groups that meet here. We have over 40 a week that meet here. I also ask them to get involved in the kitchen. Some of them are volunteering. So my goal is to get more people involved in the life of a parish. And hopefully with getting involved in the life of the parish and the works of Christ, that will then get them into the pews. And you know, I, I even thought of uh, putting a statue outside put some tattoos on the arms and call it St. Hipster. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of cool. That would, I wonder how people react to that one. You know, that would be really funny. That would be kind of cute. We were discussing the church, and um, as I look around, I see a lot of statues in here. Can you explain about that? Yeah, sure. I actually lit two candles in there. Well, the Saints Chapel, as we call it, uh, is very famous in Brooklyn because many people come. What happened was when, as I said, they tore down the second church, there were many statues in that church. So they took all those statues and they put them into one room. And that's why we have the shrine room with all the statues. And then over the years, we have acquired different statues. 
With the Italians, they have a great devotion. Every town has a patron saint. Sure. So when many of the people came from Italy from their towns, they came here with the tradition of the feast of their town and their saint. So when they came here, they wanted their saint in the saint's chapel. So they, they purchased the statue or they brought it from Italy and uh, they asked to have their church put here. And that continues to today. Just uh, last month, I got a statue from uh, Palermo, Italy, from the owners of Villabate uh, Alba Bakery. Oh. Uh, they have a great devotion to St. Rosalia. And the church over there gave them the statue uh, because they support the church there. And they asked if they can have the statue put here. And we just put that in last week. So we're still receiving statues here. And when people come, especially during the feast, they come in and they look at all the saints. And uh, I always say, if you can name all the saints, you win a prize. That's a good, <laughs> I, I couldn't, I'd probably lose. You know, I noticed before, you televised these masks. Yes, uh, the masses are live streamed on Sunday. So if you go on our Facebook page and uh, website, you can live stream the mass. Because many of the old timers can't get to mass anymore. And it's great also for funerals and weddings. If uh, they like to have the funeral or wedding live streamed, if you know if they have relatives in Italy or yeah. they have people can't make the church for a wedding, they could uh, watch it on the live stream. I never thought about that. Yes. It's not just mass, but if somebody can't make a wedding right. for some reason, they can now actually watch it. We're here at the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Paulinus and the Giglio and Monsignor Jamie. Hey, Anthony, hey, how we are. are you? Hey, look, we're very relaxed today. We're in blue. I'm in yes. shorts. Welcome to our feast. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank I, you, you know, I remember being here during Christmas and I sang here. So rather than me explaining to our viewers everything, I'd like for you to take us on a tour. So the of camera's course. gonna follow us. All well, right. let's start right over here. Uh, this is what the feast is all about. We have the statue here of Our Lady in Mount Carmel and the statue uh, is brought out from the, out inside the church on opening night. Uh, which was Thursday uh, the 5th of July. We go for 12 days. We have an opening mass and the statue then is brought out. And as you can see, people come and they pray, they light a candle and um, they pin money on the statue. Yes, I see that, yes. <laughs> As a donation. And the statue is out here every night for the 12 nights. And on the 16th, which is the end of the feast, that day we have masses beginning, uh, the vigil mass the evening before. We have a, an 11 o'clock mass that ends at midnight. And then we come out here and we say the rosary and the candles are lit all night. And in the morning, we start with all of our masses. Uh, we have masses in English. We have a mass at 12 o'clock with Monsignor Casado. We have a mass at three o'clock with Bishop Marzio, which is in English and Italian. Then we have a mass in Polish at six o'clock. We have a mass in Spanish at seven o'clock. We have a mass in Haitian Creole at eight o'clock. Then we have our closing ceremony where we bring in the statue, we have benediction, and then the feast ends. Wow. We have our procession on the 16th with Our Lady. So after the three o'clock mass with the bishop, the bishop will come on the float and we'll go through the streets of our parish. Wow. And this has been going on for over 100 years. 100 years. 100 you years. You watch it? 100 years. When we're down here, I, I, I hope to make a, like a little knock about it, but I feel like we're in the Godfather movie when they're walking through the Feast of San Gennaro. That's what it feels like. <laughs> come on, take us on a tour now. This is the Giglio, and this is the highlight of our feast. We lift this Giglio three times. We lift it on Giglio Sunday, mm -hmm. which is like Easter Sunday here in the parish. Okay. We lift it the following Sunday, which is Old Timers Day, where all the old timers come out and they get a lift. We have a night lift that was started a number of years ago. On Wednesday evenings, we lift it during the, in the evening. And it's a great night. Uh, the lights are all on, the, the streets are filled. I would say we had about 20,000 people here last Sunday. Now this is the Giglio, as you can see, it's about five stories high. Wow. And on the top is the statue of St. Paulinus. And St. Paulinus was the bishop of a town in southern Italy called Nola. And what happened in the fourth century, there were a lot of pirates during that time. So they went and they captured the women and the children. And they brought them back to southern Africa. What happened was a Turkish sailor came and he tried to negotiate with the bishop to get them released. So the bishop offered his life and he went with this, this Turk to southern Africa to negotiate the release of all the towns, the ladies and the children wow, I of never the knew town. That. And as he returned with the children and the women of the town, the townspeople greeted him with lilies. And in Italian, the Italian word for lily is Giglio. 
So after he died and was canonized and became a saint, the different parishes in the area started to erect a statue in his honor. And in the Italian tradition of competition, each parish tried to make a bigger statue. And over the years, the statue got bigger and bigger and bigger. And each, to this day, people in Nola, around his feast day, which is the 22nd of June, they erect a Giglio. And there are eight parishes in the town of Nola. And they each dance their own Giglio into the town square. So you got all these Giglios in one, oh my. Coming from different streets. I had the privilege of being there in 1985 when Monsignor Casado first became the pastor of this parish over almost 40 years ago. And we went to NOLA. It's an experience that you, you cannot imagine. And here, when the people came from NOLA at the turn of the century, they brought this tradition with them. And they settled here. They settled in my home parish of St. Rita's in Long Island City. We had a Giglio when I was growing up. They have a Giglio in Harlem, in Long Island, in the Bronx. But this still is the only parish that has the Giglio and the boat. The boat is where the sure Turk, the boat, yes. right, the Turk stands on the boat. And every year we nominate a different Turk. And our parish is unique because the parish still runs this feast. In many of these other places, they had a society that ran it. And as you know, human nature, people start fighting. And when you have the church running it, the church is in charge. The church keeps everyone together. And that's why our feast is so successful. This is the best feast in the country. And it's Father Thomas. Father Thomas, how are hello, you? Father say hello. Thomas, say hi. You're on camera, City we're Churches. On, we're on the net, City of Churches. And we're talking about our parish and the great feast. Uh, Father's from Poland, and he says, oh, here for a year. Polish, Father. I know I don't look it, but I am. And now he wants to bring this tradition back to Poland. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. Very good Italian tradition. That's okay. Oh, yeah. That would be great. Yes. I think the Polish people would love it. I'm sure. They would. <laughs> now, you know, we have a lot of Polish people in this neighborhood yes. from Greenpoint. Yes. Uh, so we were just telling them about the Giglio, and uh, the band sits on there, and then uh, the pastor stands on top, and 120 guys lift this Giglio, oh, wow. and we dance it up and down the streets to the music. And the culmination of the feast is on Giglio Sunday in front of the church when the lifters of the Giglio meet the lifters of the boat, which has the Turk on it and all the children representing the children in the town of Nola that were captured. And they come and they greet each other and they dance the two statues together in front of the church. And, you know, it's just an amazing, amazing experience. Wow. And uh, this is the highlight of our feast, the Giglio, and of course, the feast of, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel on the 16th. Now, you were talking about how, how about the Giglio, but how do they put it together? I mean, that's... Well, traditionally, the Giglio is made out of wood. Okay. And every year, the wood is taken down and, and constructed every year. And the facade, which is the face of the Giglio, is put on. But since we've been doing this for so long, it was in the early 60s that the, the, the parish decided to make it out of aluminum. So it actually comes in three sections. The aluminum comes apart and we store it on the school roof, but then the facade comes in six different sections. And that is paper mache. And every couple of years they change the color, the decor. And as you can see, there's Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Francis, St. Anthony, and of course, St. Paulinus is on the top. Wow. So it's deconstructed every year. There's a whole committee a work that it puts is. it together. You know, oh, this doesn't take place in a, in a week. This yeah, is this all is, year. And I know him. This is done well, really well. And that, and that takes a lot. Yeah. You know what? Let's go down and see a couple of the stands here. I'm sure you know everybody there. Remember? I hope you're hungry. I'm hungry. We'll grab a slice of something. Let's Come go. on. This is Nino, and Nino here uh, makes one of the best pizzas around, Brooklyn Pizza. Oh, wow. And uh, Nino here, he makes all his pizza. His pizza oven comes from Italy. How you doing, and Nino? Nino, how are you? Good, You're making you? some pizza? How are you? We're filming for the net, and they want to know about your pizza here. What type of pizza do you have here? Yeah, we got uh, traditional Neapolitan pies. You know, I'm known for New York style, but I've been hanging out with, like, some of the best um, 
cosmopolitan guys in the world for the past 10 years. Okay. So we use a combination of uh, Tipo Uno, which is that Caputo flower from Naples, and, um, and Double Zero Americano. So it's all in the dough. It's all in the dough. Six day <laughs> fermentation. Uh, and this pizza is unbelievable. Wood oven burning. I like this. Right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Tech Tech time time 20. World champion. Yep. They also have something here called panel. A panel is, is chickpea. It's chickpea chickpea flour, flour, flour. Right. Yeah. Oh, and wow. they fry it and they put it on Italian bread. You know, there's a place downtown Brooklyn, the Focacceria, that sell the panel and uh, they make all these Sicilian specialties. How are you tonight? How are you? You doing all right? Doing well. I'm, I'll come back late for one of my rice balls. Absolutely. What type of rice balls do you have here? Wow, look at that. Look at that. that is amazing. And then I even drizzle a little balsamic on top of it like chocolate syrup. See how you get fat coming I can understand this. You gotta die. We'll see you. And then, of course, Padre Pio watching Padre over. Padre Pio, there you go. Okay, now here we have Fazulo. I think they have probably the longest stand here in the feast. How are you tonight? Hi, how are we doing? How are How's everything? Everything's going great. I can smell that rajol. Look at that. How are oh you my tonight? God. Well, Good to you. see you. You getting a little dinner? Rajol, yeah. huh? Rajol. And they grill it with, with charcoal here. You know, some put it on the grill, some have the charcoal flavor, and that adds and enhances the different flavors of the... Uh, We've been serving off friends and friends for 73 years here. 73 years here. Wow, wow. I knew you were one of the longest, but I didn't know it was... I think I'm going gonna, gonna to be like about 100 pounds by the time I leave here tonight. Yeah. I remember when they were a dollar 73 years ago. They're not a wow. dollar anymore, right? Wow, can you believe it? <laughs> Inflation. Now, who was it? Was it your father? Actually, my grandfather. Your grandfather. My grandfather, Johnny. Johnny, and he was... He was a staple here. He was a staple. He was Whenever they had a feast and they had a picture in the paper and the news, they always had him here. Right. Your wow. grandfather. He actually worked the stand until he was 94 years old. Right. God bless him. When wow. did he pass? About? He passed, uh, it'll be 13 years. 13 years. He passed in 97. Wow. God bless him. So we remember great, great him. Man. Yeah. You know, we're over here, you're talking about all this food. First of all, the brajol I'm going back for and the pizza. <laughs> I'm going to, even even in the in the rice balls. Now, being a chef with breaking bread, do you have any of your culinary skills with you, with, with this? Or well, you just I, just, I, you know, I just come in. I critique the food. Oh, I know okay. where the best stands are. Okay. But you know, during the feast, I mean, it's a lot of work that goes sure. into this feast. I mean, I'm going from seven in the morning to one in the morning, wow. twelve days straight. And then it's also, you know, the preparation for the feast. We go out with the procession. We go out with 1,750 loaves of bread the day before the lift. And we go through the streets with band and we give out bread to the people. On the morning of Giglio Sunday, we go to each house and we pick up all of the capos. You have the lifters on the Giglio, but then you have the capos. They're the ones that give the commands of when to lift the Giglio, how to turn it, how to dance it. And they wait 30, 40 years to become number one. They start out as kids on the boat and they work their way up until the jail. That morning, we go out to, to maybe 15 different houses. We're out four hours. We march into church, and all the lifters are in there. We have a wonderful mass with the bishop. Then we come out, we lift the jail for four or five hours. Then the feast is open until midnight. There's a lot going on here. This is yeah, it's not that simple. This is not just put together in a day. I'm, I'm beginning to understand that. This is amazing. Where's Angelo? He's all around. Angelo, uh, I don't know. Where is he? So what do you do? Who's in charge here tonight? Vinny. Vinny, Vinny you're the boss. Yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you from across the Vinny street. The boss. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> I love you. But anyway, what do we have? We have oh, sausage yeah. here, a hot and sweet. We have some uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Rob, Rob here. Yeah. We put up, we have grilled eggplant. Egg we have grilled chicken. Yeah. We have shish kebab. We have chicken, veal, beef. Look at this. We have yeah, steak brajol. sandwiches, wow. brajol. Nice. You name it, hot peppers. Look at this. this you name it, this, you know? and you can put anything on the sandwich that you like. We got a comment over there. So, uh, thank you guys. How many, how many nights left? God bless you. How many nights left? Three? Two more, Two more after tonight.
I like your movie, movie. You're like to. Thank you. Of course, being Italian, I see seafood here. Yes, here we are. It's uh, what's called. It's been here many years, Lou's, but Mario's runs it now. Okay. But as you see, they have uh, crab cakes, cakes. They have scallops, fried clams, coconut shrimp, galamad, fried mozzarella, onion rings, French fries. You name it, they have it. And then over here, tonight they have soft shell crabs. Oh wow, soft shell crabs. These uh, soft shell crabs are, are delicious and uh, they're delicious fried. And then over here we have our, our uh, raw seafood bar. We have uh, shrimp cocktail, oysters, and clams on the half shell. How about trying one? I'll try one, it's been a long time. A little hot sauce? I'm gonna do it with you. You know I haven't had a clam, this is the truth. In over 34 years, this is the first time I'm with Monsignor. Now what you do here, you squeeze some lemon on top. Yeah. Then you put a little bit of, this is cocktail sauce, which is sweet. I like a little hot sauce. Put a little hot sauce on top. Okay. And what you do is you take it like that with your fingers. All right. You take them in your mouth and you just put it in and you suck the clam right off right, the shell. Oh, wow. Delicious. That was great. How many of these do you shuck a night? About? Uh, 1,500. 1,500 on a busy night. Wow. Can you imagine that? So you wow. get an idea of how many people this come. This guy, when he goes to sleep at night, he's sleeping like this. I hope you take a nice shower before you go to bed. He's been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> 30, 30 years. years. Look at that. Where's Mario tonight? He's been doing this for 30 years. 30 years. There is the best calzones and the best zeppelin. Uh, yeah, the best. I like that. Uh, Joey D. That's his name, De Stefano. He owns a, 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 a steak place in the neighborhood, but he's been here, I think, for about 40, 50 years since when he was a kid. These are the best zeppelis and calzone you can get in the feast, if not the city. And a calzone, as you can see, it's dough. They stuff it with regatta and ham, and then they deep fry it. Wow. Our traditional zeppelis are just basically flour, water, and yeast. They throw it in the oil, and um, they just serve them with a lot of powdered sugar on them. These are the Zeppelis over these here. here. These are the Zeppelis, and as you can see, yeah, look. they put a lot of sugar, powdered sugar inside of them. Hello, ladies. How are we doing tonight? How are you? Now, you can see he's making the, um, the Zeppelis. See how fast they put them in? They have to put a hole in the middle because you want them to fry all around. How many Zeppelis do you make a night, approximately? How many? Thousands? A lot. A lot. He's smiling because he knows it's a lot. They, they can't even count. But really, there are lines here, and normally people get it six or a dozen, you know, like nothing. Here we are. I guess we're in the center of the feast. Because yes. if you look in that direction, like I see the uh, a couple rides. of rides. A lot of rides. So many stands. We have and stands we and rides here. down here. And we have... Uh, the Giglio down here, and, you got a and we around. have the Ferris wheel. As you can see, as he you know goes all around, the feast is a total of five blocks long. Wow. Because we go two blocks down Havamaya here, we go from North 8 to North 6, we go down the block here, one block, we go in front of the church for one block, and we go on this side of the rectory for one block. So it's five full blocks of rides, food, and games. Look, we're only here, it's about Quarter to seven, and I'd say there are thousands of people here right. already. By nine o'clock, uh, the streets are packed. It's amazing. I mean, really. How are you? Yeah. This is something. I'm so glad that we promised you we'd come back, and and I really am happy we came back to, to film this because I think our viewers are going to love this because next year they're going to wind up coming here because they say this so. looks really great. I hope so. Now you were talking about the boat, right? Yes. So. This was the famous boat you're talking yes. about, the Turk? This is the boat that we use on Giglio Sunday. And here you have about 80 or so lifters that lift the boat. And the Turk that we nominate every year is dressed in a Turk outfit. He stands in the front. Every year where they pick different children to ride up there with them because you want to get the younger generation involved oh, well, to you, keep the tradition going. Well, if you said it took 30 years to be right. a chapel, I can understand. And you want them to get involved so that when they grow up, they'll lift the big gilio and become the capos, and they'll be in charge of the committees because it's so important to keep this feast going. Not only 
uh, because it's a tradition, and not only for the finances, but this is part of our culture, the Italian culture. These traditions were brought to us from Italy, and you want to keep these traditions, these uh, these cultural things alive because that's who we are. We want to pass them on to the next generation. So you want to get the children involved and we want to keep our feast alive. So they march and they, they lift it. And as I said, the boat meets the Giglio in the front of the church. And uh, that's the highlight of the feast. Well, I want to tell you something. I knew nothing about the Giglio, nothing about the Turk in the boat, nothing about this feast until I came here. This is the first time I'm here. And I have to tell you, this is truly, truly an amazing feast. So you people next year, you're gonna have to come down here because Monsignor Jamie and everybody here does a phenomenal job. So guys, a Lady of Mount Carmel, the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Paulinus. Make sure next year you come to the feast. It's always the first week in July. Wanda e festa, e festa. When we feast, we feast. God bless you. God bless, thank you. Monsignor, I want to thank you, uh, thank you for allowing us to come here to your new parish. And I know you're, you're doing a great job. I know you have your own website, which we'll put up on the screen for you. You could follow us at Facebook or Twitter or our own website, netnewyork.tv, or write into us at City of Churches at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, I'm here with Monsignor Jamie at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg. Thank you for watching and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.